Let me share some of my frustrations with Copilot PowerPoint. Let us go to PowerPoint. And as soon as I open PowerPoint, this is what I get. The first thing I see here is this big prompt that asks me to use Copilot. Because probably Microsoft feels that it is one of the best things that you can do with PowerPoint. And therefore, there are three options available here. So let me choose one of the options that I see here. Let us go with the middle one, create a presentation from a file and that opens up this sidebar. I have some presentation that I can improve. So let me use Copilot for that. Let me go here and click on create a presentation from file. Now I click once, twice, thrice. No, there's no point because this is a dummy piece here. It doesn't work. Maybe I don't have the access to business enterprise model of Copilot. Probably that is the reason why I don't have access to this. Or I'm still not one of the people to whom this access is given. I don't know what the reason is, but to have an option here and have it not work is quite frustrating. Even otherwise, I have a fundamental issue about how much Copilot is being thrusted into the throats of people, whether they like it or not. Now, take a look at this, just the position of this icon here. There is no way that you can change its position. There is no way that you can choose to switch it off. You can't do a thing. Now, because this icon is here in the top left corner, you can see that my active slide area is reduced, which means I cannot work with PowerPoint effectively. My font sizes will look smaller. So when I go to this option here called fit slide to current window, this is all that I can see. Is this the way that the PowerPoint slide fits the current window? It is not. Even if they choose to move this icon from here to here, there is a lot of slide area that I can claim back. But then I think it is a conscious decision to make sure that everybody notices and uses Copilot and that is the reason why it is kept here right up front. Normally when you have an icon here right on the screen it is probably because it is not on the home tab but actually even on the home tab it is right there in front of me. When I have this option here why do I need to have this option here? I don't know. You all know how much I like PowerPoint. I feel that it is a very capable program. It can do so much more than what many people use it for. But somehow I feel that this co-pilot option is somehow rushed and it is not fully developed and it is being forced upon every single presenter and I don't really like that idea. Now let us go to the second option here. It says create a presentation about the benefits of meditating every day. Since there is a suggestion made about the topic that I need to choose, let me choose the same thing, the benefits of meditating every day. So I'm going to click here and say create a presentation about the benefits of meditating every day. I'm not even choosing a very complex topic. I'm choosing just the very topic that Copilot suggests as a model prompt. Let me hit enter and presentation topics are being generated. Now look at the various topics. Prima facie, these topics look pretty nice. Introduction to meditation, mental health benefits, physical health benefits, spiritual and emotional benefits, etc. And it looks like a pretty organized piece of information. But then when I see that an outline like this is presented to me, I naturally assume that it is possible for me to do some changes to this so I can have a more customized presentation. But when I click here, I don't really have any way of changing any of the things that are being shown here. All I can do is probably move this up and down, but that is not the point here because already things are being organized pretty nicely. I appreciate Copilot for that. But then there is no point in showing an outline if there is no way somebody can make changes to that outline. Now there is one option here called add new topic. So I'm going to add a new topic. So let us click on this and say, how can I make meditation as a daily habit? So making meditation as a daily habit. So that is the topic and that is all I can do. There is not much I can do here. Let us say enter and you have some potential ideas being considered by Copilot. And this is what I get, making meditation a daily habit. And there are three more points added. Now let us go to generate slides option. So I get my slide deck here. I'm going to say keep it and let us see what kind of content is generated. The title is this pretty long. It's okay. The benefits of meditating every day, enhancing mind, body and spirit. Then the agenda. Then let us go to the individual sections. Introduction to meditation. And this is the slide. I really like the fact that they have included some notes for narration in the notes area. It is a very good practice. 
but then they'll miss the whole point. Now take a look at this. There are three points that are being discussed here. Focus of the mind, mindfulness techniques, visualization, meditation. Each one in itself is a topic of a presentation, but let us ignore that for the moment. Now for all these three points, the narration is what is shown here. I'm just going to expand this a little bit. So you're supposed to say this while presenting these three points. Is that what the point is? Now, if I go to the next one, just a cursory, very generic one sentence narration for three, three bullet points in every single slide. Now, if I were to just think about how this narration compares with what is being shown on the slide, let me increase the size because now that this silly icon is here, let me reduce this a little bit and then let us focus here. It says mindfulness meditation and see the quality of the information given here. Mindfulness meditation focuses on being present in the moment, enhancing awareness and reducing stress. Transcendental meditation. Transcendental meditation involves silently repeating a mantra to reach a state of profound relaxation awareness. Guided meditation. Guided. If you present like this, I'm sure your audience will go to sleep. Now, for all this, the narration is there are various forms of meditation including mindfulness meditation, transcendental meditation, guided meditation, so on and so forth. So just the topics are being talked about in the narration, but there is no explanation whatsoever of what is being shown here. So that means this narration is not really doing any justice to the points that are being presented here. Let me just close this notes area. The next issue I have is inclusion of this full sentences as bullet points. If you want to create a document that you would distribute to people so they can read by themselves, then having full sentences as bullet points is acceptable. But then if you are creating a presentation, then having full sentences as bullet points really puts you in the back foot as a presenter because this forces the audience to read the entire information on the slide. Now, when I go to slideshow, see how the animation is used. Just for the namesake, animation is used. But then this animation is not really serving the purpose, which is to reveal the information one point at a time, which means I'm revealing the entire information to the audience right up front and waiting for them to read the entire document before I can say anything, which means your slide is your presentation and not you, which is exactly the opposite of what it should be. Then let us talk about the kind of visuals that are being used here. Now take a look at this. Nothing can get more generic than a candle lit on some kind of a rug and this is supposed to represent meditation and then this image i don't even know what this is whatever it is this is supposed to be the visual to represent this and this is the visual to represent this you cannot have anything more generic than this and the same type of images are even being repeated here can you see the same candle in a different angle same person sitting in different poses is this all they could think of when it comes to meditation and see how shallow the information is. For example, boosted immune system. All right, so it is really nice that meditation boosts immune system. Where is the data to substantiate this? Where is the source of information so I can go and explore more information about it? Is there any chart? Is there any proof for what you're saying? When you present something serious like health benefits of meditation, I would expect that there is some level of research done and some level of data shown to make the points valid but I don't see any of that. It's very shallow. And I'm not saying this just for this presentation. I've tried a lot of presentations. I've tried different types of presentation topics. I've gone very deep in terms of giving my prompts, but none of that seems to make any kind of difference to the quality of information presented using Copilot. You see, I like the idea that they wanted to make visual slides by adding some photos, but then adding photos like this, generic photos to your slides, doesn't make a slide visual. There is a very simple test that lets you know whether your slides are visual or not. And the test is, you take any slide that you think is visual, just remove the picture and then ask yourself, now that I removed that picture, is this slide in any way less complete? Will the audience find it difficult to understand the information because I removed the image? If your answer is no, then all that your picture has done is to add some decoration to your slides. There is a big difference between visual slides where visuals add meaning and purpose to your information and slides with picture where the pictures are mere decoration. Now, let us see the layout here. Every layout is exactly the same. There is a picture that covers half the slide area and there are bullet points 
and even the bullet points have the exact same format. There is some title and there is a full sentence. And you go from one slide to the next, it is exactly the same pattern. There is a title and there is a full sentence. Now, if you are going to make a presentation that looks so generic, there is no way you are going to hold your audience's attention. By the way, I've put together a very useful resource called the Ultimate Litmus Test for Boardroom Slides, your free four-part guide. This is a free email series that gives you practical tips about how to make your slides boardroom ready. If you're someone who makes presentations as part of your work, then this free four-part guide can definitely help you. I will leave a link to this in the description box below the video. You can sign up for this free four-part guide. Now, coming back to our presentation, I can go on and on about the kind of issues that I see with Copilot. When I go here, take a look at the font size that is used. 14. Even the title is 14. Is this the font size that you would use when you are presenting in a boardroom? Will your audience be able to read what you are showing them? What about the color scheme that is used? If I have brand guidelines, is there any way I can use Copilot to ensure that my presentation looks consistent with the rest of my presentations? Now, let me try and enhance this presentation using the designer option because this looks very plain Jane. So let me go here and click on designer. Now, when this shows as an active button, I'm assuming that this will work. When I click here, I don't really see any option coming here on the sidebar, which means this is how it's going to be. And when I walk into the boardroom, I just need to show them something that looks like this. Do I have a choice? I don't seem to have from the way it looks. What about things like visual hierarchy? Do I have any way of showing which of these three is more important, which is less important? <laughs> really nothing. Now, the thing is, if you're forcing every single user of PowerPoint to use Copilot by putting something like this here right on their face, and if the result of using Copilot is something as generic as this, then what is the point of all this? Why keep pushing it so hard when the actual product is not that good? If I use something as simple as ChatGPT and give the same prompt benefits of meditating every day and see the result, take a look at what I got. It's far more interesting to read. Your brain gets a software update when you do meditation. Stress becomes less of a drama queen. There is some analogy shown. There is some data shown. There is some humor like sleep like a well-fed cat. Your attention span stops acting like a goldfish's. I would any day use this to make my slides. If I want to make my slide, I can ask ChatGPT to give me my slides. Let me write a lazy prompt like give me a set of six slides on the benefits of meditating every day. I'm not really using any deeper prompt because I want to make like to like comparison and let us see what I get here. It gives me how my title slide should look like and then what should be the key point on each of the slides that are shown here and what is the visual, what kind of visual is used and what is the fact. That is how the information is presented in each one of them. And if I want ChatGPT to give me my PowerPoint slides, I can do that. It says, would you like me to create the PowerPoint slides for you? All I need to say is yes and hit enter. It has created my presentation. I just need to click here and open the presentation. Of course, this looks like it is made in 1990s. It's okay. I can always go to design and change the slide size to widescreen. And here I have the option to work with my slides. Like I can go and apply any kind of a design theme if I want. And here I have the option to use designer to add some embellishments to whatever that I have here. So this looks way better than the default one that is shown. And when I go to any particular slide, supercharge your focus and productivity. Take a look at the kind of options I get. I have the option to use smart art, which looks really nice here. I have some icons and relevant text. I can go here and see if there is any other way that I can present. If I want to have a variation of my icons, I can do so. The icons that are used seem to have some purpose. For example, it says strengthens the immune system and I have the icon of a gut. Just 5 to 10 minutes a day can change everything and I have the icon of a stopwatch. Now compare that to the generic slide set that I just showed you. Do these pictures look like any effort is put to illustrate the points that are shown here? I don't think so. Anyway, you get the point. I don't really want to go on and on. If you want to get this free four part guide called the ultimate litmus test for boardroom slides, please click on the link in the description box below the video and sign up for this option. If you really want to learn PowerPoint and you don't want to invest any money in joining our Ram Gopal's PowerPoint mastery program, you can always go to our YouTube and look at the various playlists we have. 
We've got quite a few very useful playlists for you to improve your presentation skills and the way you present your information. If you want ideas on creative ways to present data in PowerPoint, we have a playlist for that. If you want to know how to make over some technical presentations like medical slides, we have a playlist for that. If you want to improve your business presentations, we have a playlist for that. There's a lot you will gain by watching these videos. I'm sure Microsoft is working hard and in the future, this option is going to be way better than the way it is right now. But at least till that point, it would be so nice not to push Copilot so hard to every single PowerPoint presenter. This is my humble request to Microsoft. I don't know whether they are listening to this or not, but at least I have shared my views about this program. I want to know what your views are about this AI tool. Please share your opinions in the comment section below. So at least when the powers that be read your comments, chances are that they might take it seriously and do some necessary alterations to this program. In the meantime, I will leave a link to this popular video right now on your screen. You can click on the link and watch this video next and learn some very useful business presentation lessons that we borrowed from Steve Jobs. I'll see you inside that video.